If you've been watching my videos for a while, then you probably know that I really recommend that you have a complete copy of your family tree on your own computer. But what if you've been building your family tree totally online up to this point? Well, the good news is that you can export your family tree as a GEDCOM file. But what exactly is a GEDCOM file? Okay, so in this video, we are going to answer that question and we're gonna talk about how you can use them. I've invited Gordon Clark. He's the GEDCOM Developer Relations Manager at the free genealogy website, familysearch.org to join me to give us the full scoop. Welcome to the show, Gordon. Thank you. Glad to be here. We were just talking about how long we've been in the industry, and uh, I know you have a really extensive tech background, so I can't think of anybody better to be in charge of GEDCOMs over at Family Search. So let's jump right into it. Um, tell everybody, what is a GEDCOM? Well, uh, GEDCOM actually is an acronym for GE genealogical data D communication. It's a type of file with specific rules that allows digital family history products to exchange information. Uh, it's been around so long that uh, all the software companies can can uh, read it and export it. Say for example you have a particular family tree program you've been working in. But there are some features in another application that you like to try out. <clears throat> with a computer file, uh, you want to try out, it out with a computer file that both programs can read. So all the popular genealogic programs allow you to write a GEDCOM file and then you can read it in uh, and review your information and add to it. Um, that is what a GECON is for. It's a specific file type that was, works with most family history applications. It's a, a text-based file, though it has special constraints to it, but it was designed to be uh, easily adaptable and compatible with uh, importing and exporting. So as long as the developers of both products adhere to GEDCOM specifications, you shouldn't have any trouble downloading from one and uploading to the other. Uh, you can learn more at, we've grabbed some domain names, you can learn more about the basics of GEDCOM at GEDCOM.info. Great. So just to be clear, it sounds like each genealogy software, database, website, they probably have their own proprietary file type, right? So this is one everybody sort of agrees on that can extract the genealogy data. Is that right? Right. And there are differences between the proprietary program and GEDCOM. So whether it's more or less, uh, uh, there's some products out there that all they support is GEDCOM. Oh, okay. Uh, and so, so that's, that's their proprietary format. So why should we use one? If we're using a database, why should we, or why would we find ourselves going, I wish I had this GEDCOM, this universal file? Uh, uh, family history is, is more of a record keeping, whether it's photos and stories and, and genealogical data. Um, people like to keep it and and have control over it. Um, so GEDCOM is, I like the word personal. You can personally control it. Uh, it's just a .ged file, so any operating system can can handle, copy this to there, email it by attaching it. So for personal control, preservation, and sharing of genealogical data, um, it's the most universally accepted format. So whether, whether or not you like the interface of a specific um, online or desktop program, 
I would think uh, for your backup purposes because it's so universal that that program that you're using make sure it has the ability to save your data in JGCOM and then you can decide uh, uh, whether you put it in your thumb drives or uh, removable drive or you put it up in the cloud uh, you can decide how to preserve it and uh, so think of it more as your personal uh, file over this important information I like that idea I, I I'm probably not alone in that way back because I've been doing this genealogy stuff for so long somebody gave me the little floppy disk and it had the whole family tree that this person had been working on that was dovetailed right into mine but it was proprietary and it was a program that no longer exists and I'm helpless to be able to to be able to use it so a Jed comment sounds like would really um, solve that issue you kind of touched on this but I just want to just double check can all family tree programs and websites export the JEDCOM? Are, are you familiar with anything that, boy, if you're using this program, you're not going to, they don't have that feature, or do most of them do? It's safe. Uh, I would say all of the popular programs and websites make it possible to import JEDCOM, and most of them allow for exports. There's some exceptions to the rules. Um, so it's something that if you're going to spend your time using a program, uh, look into to it to see if it's JetCom compatible. So the software provider's commitment, yeah, the, we also, to help even more so uh, standardize the industry, um, the software provider's commitment to implementing the newest version of JetCom, and much as it is backward compatible, but we'll be presenting those that uh, have or will be planning to implement the newest version at JEDCOM at Roots Tech this year. So you can search in Roots Tech and search for JEDCOM and see uh, the videos of, of, of what's um, been rolled out and what's coming. So there's a, a pretty good effort to give everybody an update on JEDCOM at Roots Tech. That's going to be terrific. Well, and so let's talk about that because you're talking about the development of it. In a sense, it's continuing to evolve because data and, and systems continue to evolve. Is there one particular group or authority or somebody who's in charge of deciding what the JEDCOM is and how it works? Or is that a role that FamilySearch is playing? It is a role that FamilySearch has been playing. Um, Family Search is the uh, software uh, development, education, marketing uh, support arm of the department um, called Family History Department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. So sometimes, because of marketing reasons, people think that we're different. Uh, Family Search is totally owned, run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. From a historical standpoint, the original specification was created and released in 1984. And all subsequent versions have been copyrighted by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, now, in the last three years, um, as a like a product manager I uh, was uh, took on the responsibility for working on the new version version 7 of JETCOM but it's always been a, an, an effort um, of uh, family search as the outreach arm for the family history department what we did differently in this last version is we uh, solicited all the key players and software companies and so it was much more of a collaborative effort to go through the changes uh, things to keep things to just get rid of um, it took about two years working with many people um, and so now the version is what is called a public github repository 
So as we work towards version 7, it was to prepare it for a starting point for um, much more of a uh, public. The decision process is still a steering committee uh, uh, sponsored by Family Search, but the input and the communication on changes is open to all software developers. And you can learn about all that because it's hosted at jedcom.io. So jedcom.info is kind of like the general public and jedcom.io is more for uh, technical software developers. Makes sense. So in uh, 2021, I believe, wasn't it Roots Tech that you introduced Jedcom 7? I think it'd be great if you could tell us what are some of the features? What are some of the things that you consider when you're continuing to develop the Jedcom? The process that we worked on was, um, I think, to eliminate ambiguity. There could be different software uh, providers that would interpret the specifications, the file specifications, a little bit differently. And we wanted to clean up the specifications so that uh, there would be much more, uh, not 100 percent, but uh, much better compatibility between the people that were reading it and writing it. So, so we worked very tediously on eliminating the uh, ambiguity. I would think the the biggest thing is it's become more of a, a storage format um, of photos and records and data. So uh, just to be safe here, uh, let me read something. FamilySearch Jetcom version 7 incorporates the added ability to include photos and other files when users download a FamilySearch Jetcom 7 file from a supported family tree product. So we're on this promotion that if you uh, are working with somebody that is supporting JEDCOM 7, that means if you want to, your local photos can be bundled in a special file that we call JEDZIP. So it's a JEDCOM file that is a zip package. And that means that anybody that un unzips that package will get the JEDCOM file and all the external uh, files associated with it and have everything be readable. So it's a, a packaging technique to put everything together, which really adds to this idea of a personal preservation and sharing. Now you can package everything together and preserve it and share everything that's important to you uh, with others. So in addition to this zip packaging capability, um, notes have been expanded for m more versatile use and styling of text. Um, so when you add notes to whether it's a relationship or a location, uh, you can actually stylize those notes now and use bold and use italic. Um, many tools and sample files uh, were created to uh, help with self-testing and uh, and um, the other thing like I had mentioned it's based upon the Apache license which is more of a technical slant on things but to software developers that means it's an open software license and uh, there's a public github repository um, that you go to github.com slash family search and so that you can request and watch ongoing changes in a more of a, a public environment, though Family Search is still the the stewards and has the final say on decisions. So that's that's what's new is uh, it's more open to the public. It's been cleaned up with uh, some important new features, but backward compatibility for 90% of the JetComs that are out there, and the last one was 5.5.1, uh, is, is, um, is still possible. But it won't go back to 3.0, 2. Point. That's, where, that's where some of the incompatibilities are, is because uh, people are using versions that are 20 years old, and they were 
things have changed a lot in the last 25 years. So I think that gives you a start of, of a, we have a clean, fresh start, a new community working on continuous improvements, but they won't, <clears throat> there won't be changes because a standard shouldn't change much. It, it, this new version 7 is going to be pretty much the same for a while till everybody gets on board. You mentioned photographs. Would that include image files? Would that include if we downloaded an image, which might be a JPEG of a record, that, that those also would come along with the JEDCOM? Yes, absolutely. Everything has a, um, all the elements of JEDCOM. Um, have definition of how to use them and what's called the multimedia link the multimedia link means you can link to local files JPEGs PDFs you know whatever they are and if you don't want to put it all together you can link to files that are in the cloud and it will remember where they are so if you package them together in a JEPSIC file and then uh, you unpackage it, you'll be able to access the local image files and the local records there. So this idea of putting it all together, I mean bandwidth is much better than it used to be, but still for people that have uh, hundreds of thousands of images, this yeah. is not the best format for that. And so they can work out a strategy of what cloud service they use and uh, what do they keep their most precious uh, you know photos what do they keep local and so they can keep track of everything both in the cloud and on their local drive and that can all be referenced in this new version of JetCom. Excellent so um, can one of the questions I've heard from people uh, is they are concerned about loss, data loss. If they're importing, they're exporting, maybe going back and forth, is there a chance that you're going to lose things or even introduce an error of some type? Um, <clears throat> this is kind of the issue of the work on version 7. One of the biggest issues is not only new features, uh, but to get a new standard to kind of clean the slate that uh, if you get stuff into the new JEDCOM version 7, uh, the likelihood of data loss is, is greatly reduced. So we're encouraging the adoption and use of JEDCOM 7 because it's less likely to cause any, any data loss or errors. Uh, family search and industry experts have worked for two years to remove ambiguities simplify the definitions and samples in order to eliminate the possibility of data loss and errors when transferring between programs. So in the Excellent. long run, not, not only more media, but the whole goal is to, re to reduce, improve the consistency, the compatibility, and the uh, minimize or even eliminate data loss so what you will start being seeing is the question is it JetCom 7 compatible because yeah. JetCom 7 uh, when we were working with something that was 20 years old is going to be more compatible in the future because we have a, a body to watch out for it than uh, dealing with older versions of JetCom so it, it doesn't mean your data your data will migrate to the new version without data loss, but looking at down the road, staying with the version seven or higher will assure um, uh, assure um, better uh, better um, uh, preservation of what you have. Terrific. I think you mentioned or alluded to that there might be some announcements coming at Roots Tech uh, 2022. Go go to the sessions and uh, type in JETCOM and you will get three opportunities. Um, one is a session called JETCOM 7 Launched and Rolling Strong and then another session will be Family Search JETCOM 7 What's Next and the answer is Teamwork. 
Uh, so there's two pre-recorded videos about the what's new in JetCom 7 and then how the industry is going to join together in working on it in the future. In, in um, one of the sessions, the first one, there actually is a, a slide that shows all the companies that uh, have uh, committed to it and I can't uh, pre pre announce that it's the fun of having a uh, event like Roots Tech um, but there's a all the majority of the companies have said uh, both both in the cloud and desktop and laptop uh, have said uh, uh, and some of them even said when they're going to release it and one company I think is announcing their release at Roots Tech of the new JetCom version 7. Excellent. Wow, that's great to see. Um, anything I didn't ask you or that you think people should really be aware of as they move forward and, and keep up to date with the JetCom 7? Um, again, with a standard, we don't want to change too much too fast because um, they want it to get solid as a, a new transfer format. But um, I think the big areas that we're working on on future versions is is related quite a bit to internationalization um, there are probably 20 different calendaring systems that are different than what we do in the US and to be able to respect those different calendars and to understand the translation between calendars is a big part of internationalizing JEDCOM. The other part related to that is is uh, there are some places in the world where how they define relationships um, between people is not a uh, is not typical to to either the US or uh, Western Europe and so we are working on major upgrades and encourage people to come join with us so that the naming convention, and we, we may think uh, given name, given name, surname, but in reality there's other relationships that get into the name and if we even go to Africa, they take their name is the first name in, in some areas of Africa that may go back 10 generations. So they memorize their name is a memorization of all those names. So improving on on names is an important effort, the structure and relationships. Another improvement is places. Uh, because places we think hierarchical and, and um, jur certain jurisdictions, um, but over time uh, and in different areas of the world, how you organize places is different. So we need to address that in the JetCom specification. Um, and uh, sources and citations uh, need to be upgraded for the genealogical community. And so we certainly invite not only software developers, but genealogists to join our effort to improve uh, sources and citations. But one thing I'm really excited about is we have a team that's been working a year, and they'll probably work on it another year or two, on what we call hypothesis. Uh, this is so that you can share information without claiming it as a conclusion and keep it separate from a conclusion. So this encourages collaboration. So people, instead of arguing about, well, I'm right, you're wrong, my fact's right, you're right, we'll call it a hypothesis and then have a discussion until there's enough sources to prove it. So this hypothesis module, I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, and, but that won't be for a couple years or so that we actually uh, release it. I think that's a terrific idea because so often we ourselves are just battling with ourselves what we think the answer is and we want to track it while we're doing it. Uh, I'm curious, you know, sometimes we go to a website and you have to pick what language you speak or perhaps if you're searching for videos on YouTube, you know, you might say English, whatever. Did they, uh, have you guys considered 
is is the goal no matter what it's only one type that serves every country or was there a consideration of you could select your country and then the jedcom would support your calendar your geographic areas that kind of thing was that i'm sure that was a discussion oh uh, absolutely and uh but what you're talking about just to be clear is the specification is to give all of the options and more uh, to the software developer. So the software mm -hmm. developer can decide uh, <clears throat> uh, the language of the interface and many of them are already doing this. So um, the actual presentation, if it's Norwegian or, or Danish or whatever, uh, uh, it's different according to the language that you place. What we're looking at, according to your language of choice, is that the orientations on names, relationships, and places jurisdictions will, uh, will be easy for the software developer to switch to by just uh, changing that. So, so when we look at international, how people look at information, um, it may be a, a different lens that they look through it and so having the mm -hmm. ability to give the software developers out of our future specs to switch their interface and and switch around because they they might be working in one part of the country because of their heritage and then they might work in another and to be switched between it and to still have the data be the same uh, regardless of what uh, what uh, uh, national lens they're looking through, it's amazing that one little package can contain so much and so much flexibility. That's really terrific. Well, Gordon, well, um, I, I, I won't. So I won't. I would just want to put in a, a plug here, real fast. Is yes, please. is I won't. I won't. I won't drop names, but in my immediate steering committee that we meet with weekly we have a meeting today not only do i have three representations from um from uh, within family search from the community i i like to call them doctors they are doctors uh, they have their phds in computer science they have their phds uh, some are genealogists they have their P uh, one is even a linguistic professor uh, another is a uh, uh, actual uh, legal profession so you'll see at the presentations who the key people are that are are saying well don't forget this watch out for that we got to be sure we do it this way so it, it's been wonderful to work with uh, such experts really that are reasonable and want to make things easy for the software developer. So it's quite a dilemma. Instead of just making it right uh, in the specification, but we got to make it right and make it easier for the software developers to implement it. So that's my my thanks to all the people I've been able to work with. Oh, that's fantastic. And everybody watching can go and visit jedcom.io and jedcom.info and of course that's the one that's kind of more for all the rest of us through those websites are they able to offer any volunteering do you need the help of people who are doing genealogy uh jedcom.io uh you can mm -hmm. uh, volunteer in lots of different ways awesome ah oh, terrific so nice to see you again thank you so much for taking time to explain jedcoms to us here i appreciate it well, there you have it, the answer as to what a JEDCOM is and what it can do for your genealogical uh, research. And if you have a question like what is a JEDCOM or anything else that has to do with family history and genealogy, email me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. We love your questions and we want to answer them here for you right here at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. And of course, if you want more answers, guidance, um, video classes, handouts, that's what you can get as a Genealogy Gems premium member. Go to genealogygems.com. You can also go to lisalouisecook.com. They go to the same place. And there on the homepage, you will find two red buttons. One 
is where you can sign up for our free newsletter. And I hope that you'll do that. You get a special little bonus download with the first email. And the other is for premium membership. And that is a a year-long membership to our website where you get exclusive access to all my video training classes, the downloadable handouts for all the videos and things that we do, and even a premium audio podcast. So you can learn more about that, again, at genealogygems.com. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.